Hey guys, long time no see. I mean, if you've been watching my vlogs, you've seen me, but I haven't really done a really big like sit down video in a long time. So I've been gone for like about a year now. Um, and I just came back last month and you probably are like, what the hell has happened? Last year was hectic for me. There was a lot of new firsts. I changed jobs and I now work full time. So 40 hours a week. Uh, and I mean, I have a great job now. I have health insurance. I'm really happy where I am. I can listen to audiobooks while I work all day. I work in a warehouse, so. And there's a lot of like forklifts and noises and beeping and stuff. So they let us wear headphones to like block it out. And so they don't care if we're like listening to music or podcasts or audiobooks. Like that's encouraged to do. Uh, just like, you know, it's just like when you're walking around the warehouse, you can't have your headphones on, obviously, because you need to. Uh, make sure you don't get ran over by a forklift but other than that if you're like at your station like basically you know do what you do kind of a thing so it's really cool um and i work with some great people i work in a great department like it's a regular old like 9 to 5 30 type th thing monday through friday so i'm off on weekends uh today is friday but i'm off today because it's my birthday so <laughs> filming this for my birthday <laughs> uh <laughs> i don't know um took in my husband's little sister uh she's 14 so that's been an adjustment so i've just been gone because i've been having a bunch of life changes and it's been exhausting so i couldn't really find the time to continue to do booktube unfortunately but i think i'm finally in like cemented in my new routine I pretty much have everything down, so I think now I'm in a good place that I can actually be back and be present and continuous and upload, like, consistently. So, yay! But anyway, let's just go ahead and get into today's video. I'm going to be doing my April wrap-up, which I know is, like, halfway through May, but, like, this is the first chance I had, so, like... Oh, also, if you guys are curious what I read, like, in the year that I've been gone, I will leave down below the link to the book blog that I do with my friend Kristen. I was continuously posting on there this entire year, so if you guys are curious about any of the things I've been doing reading-wise while I've been gone, it's all going to be down there. So, cool. Uh, but yeah, so let's get into what I read in April. I read 24 books, so... Yay! Um, but the first book I read was actually a reread for me. It was The Naturals by Jennifer Lynn Barnes. I think I was talking to one of my friends or something and someone had mentioned something about like serial killers or whatever. I don't know. But I really wanted to reread this and I found the audiobook on Overdrive. So I listened to it while I was at work and I loved it maybe even more the second time around. Like I was obsessed. Uh, so, and I gave it a four out of five stars. The next book I read was The Bookish Life of Nina Hill by Ali Waxman, which what's funny is that this hold came in at the library, I think like two days or something before they ended up shutting down because of coronavirus. So I got really lucky because uh, I really wanted to read this. I saw this on Chelsea Dolling Reed's channel and she was raving about it and I was like, the girl has red hair and she likes to read and it sounds like me. <laughs> So I had to read it. And yeah, I definitely related to our main character. She's hilarious. She's funny. She preferred to read than like go out on a date with this guy. And I'm just like, it's such a fucking mood, dude. Uh, but yeah, I gave this a four out of five stars and I really, really enjoyed myself. Uh, the next book I read was American Royals by Catherine McGee, which here's a funny story about this. So I listened to this audiobook while I was at work, right? And the whole time I was like, wow, this really reminds me of The Towering Sky. Like, there's just something about it. And then, come to find out, I did not know who the author was. And when I found out that the author was the same author, I was like, no fucking wonder, you dumbass. So, but I honestly, I think I really, I think I enjoyed this more than The Towering Sky series, which I did really enjoy that series. But I think I like this just a little bit more. I think it's just a little bit more clever is the word I think I'm looking for. I think it's more clever than that one was. It's like the idea of the fact that Amer of America going into a monarchy system instead of a democracy. I just think that's interesting. Uh, and I gave it a four out of five. Spellbound, which is like the sixth book in the Sweep series uh, by Kate Tiernan. 
and I've been reading these for like, I don't know, a while now. And I really enjoy them. They're super quick reads. Uh, but I think this one was like my least favorite I've read so far. I just feel like nothing fucking happened until like 20 pages to the end. Like literally nothing happened. And I was bored out of my school for quite a bit of it. So, and that's crazy because these books are like, each book is only like 180 pages long. So to be bored for some of it is like, it's not good. So I gave it a 3 out of 5 because I did still enjoy, I still like enjoy like the simple day to day life of these characters but like I don't know, it just wasn't as good as the other ones have been. That's basically it. The Smart Girl's Guide to Polyamory by Decker or something that was like an audiobook and I just wanted to read it. I don't really have much to say about it. I gave it like a 4 out of 5 stars. It was interesting, informative, all the actually a buddy read with my friend Kristen. We read The Forbidden Wish by Jessica Corine. Um, yeah, so we read that and I enjoyed it. It was like, it's basically an Aladdin retelling where the genie is a girl and back in the past her master and her were like really good friends and then just all this crazy shit ended up happening and stuff like that and stuff just went wrong and now basically genies have a bad name it's just a lot um but it was pretty interesting i didn't enjoy it as much as i think kristen did just because i would have liked it more if it hadn't turned into a romance i think that was like my main complaint with it is i didn't want it to be a romance that it ended up being so so I gave it a three out of five the next book I read was Sadie by Courtney Summers which I have an arc this is an arc of it that I got when I was working at Barnes & Noble but I listened to the audiobook because everyone says if you read this book you should listen to the audiobook because it has a podcast kind of element to it and I 100% agree listen to the audiobook it's fantastic it's a full cast so that's amazing so yeah, definitely it's on overdrive. So if you are somewhere where you can use overdrive, definitely uh, look this up because it's really, really, really good. Uh, yeah, I just, I really liked it. It kept me on my toes the entire time and it's a pretty short audiobook. I think it was only like eight hours and I listened to it on double time speed. So I was done in four. And yeah, I just really enjoyed this book. Great, I gave it a four out of five. I had fun. Uh, the next book I read was Century Victorian Area England. Anyway, it's called Dangerous Alliance by Janek Cohen. Oh, you guys, I loved, 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 loved this book. It, it even says on its little tagline, it's an ostentatious romance, and I totally agree. It totally gives you the Jane Austen vibes. It's got Jane Austen quotes on like the chapter, like the little chapter title things. Oh, it's just so good. It's just so much fun. I had a blast. It's like one of my favorite kind of books is set during that time period and it was just really fun. I gave it a 4.5 out of 5. I just had a, an amazing time. A great time. Um, the next book I read was another reread. I read The Bone Season by Samantha Shannon. And I just, I've really been wanting to get back into this series because I remember when I first read it, I was obsessed and I, re and I really read this and I was again obsessed. And then, yeah, I just had such a fun time and I ended up giving it an, a 5 out of 5 again because that's what I gave it the first time I read it. I gave it another 5 out of 5. And then for the first time, I read The Pell Dreamer, which is the prequel novella to this and it's in the back of this copy. Um, and I gave that a 4 out of 5. I really enjoyed getting to see the dynamic between Jackson and Paige because you don't, because obviously you don't get that in the first book because of the events, but you get it in the prequel and I just really love seeing them, like how they interact and everything. It's just super interesting to me. So I enjoyed that and yeah, I'm excited to read the Mime Order again. This <laughs> is My Hero Academia Volume 1. Everybody? has told me that I would love this. Okay, anybody I talk to that knows I like manga and I like anime and I like that kind of thing says I would really enjoy this. And I was like, okay, 
like before just try it out let me see if i like it i was like eh, am i am i not i don't know it's not really my type of manga but i was like eh, i'll try it i really really like it it's really really good i wish i could get the next volumes because i want to know what happens uh but yeah i had a i had a really fun time i think it's super interesting um and i'm excited to see where it's gonna go i really like the art style it's just funny and i love our main character because he's just he's so small he's just so small you guys uh and i just find it funny so i gave this a four out of five and i can't wait until i can get the next volumes because i need to know all the things all right the next book i read was romanoff by nadine bradis which was a retelling of basically the shooting the czar and his entire family that happened like back in history i think it was the one around World War One is when that happened, but it's basically a retelling of that, and it's basically tells how they were like kept in that house for so long and how they were treated and everything, and it's like a retelling of that, but from the perspective of one of the daughters, it's super interesting. There's some magical and fantastical elements to it. I did really enjoy it dry in places and everything so i ended up giving it a 3.5 out of 5 stars but i would highly recommend it especially to anybody who really enjoys history because i did find it very interesting since i did learn about that in history back in the day and so i was like huh that's a very interesting take to go with it so yeah and then i reread killer instinct by jennifer lynn barnes which is the second book in the natural series and again I enjoyed it even more than I did the first time. It was just so much fun. These books are just addictive and hilarious and I love Michael. I love Michael, you guys. I just want to like hug him for like a day because I feel like he just really needs a hug. You know what I mean? Like I just really think he needs a hug and I give it four out of five. <laughs> Loki Where Mischief Lies by Mackenzie Lee and I'm just going to preface this. I read this like a couple days before the the news hit about Mackenzie Lee. If you're on book Twitter, you fucking know what I'm talking about. So I didn't know, okay? I read this before that happened, so like, don't come at me. Moving on. I did mention this in my vlog that I did of this, but I did find it very strange that at one point Loki says that when the character Theo is asking Loki about their preferences, uh, asking if they like boys or whatever and Loki's like oh I feel comfortable as either and Theo's like no I don't mean as like in being I mean as in like liking or something like that but or like he had said never mind or something like that anyway but yeah Loki was like so it seems like <laughs> it seems like Loki is saying that they are non-binary but the entire book and I do mean the entire book even after that everyone refers to Loki as he him so I don't know if that's because Loki is comfortable being referred to as he him or if that was just a weird choice. I don't know. So that kind of skeeved me out a little bit about this book. I was kind of like not here for that part of it, but I don't know. But I did enjoy it. I did like learning more about Loki because Loki is one of the most interesting characters in the Marvel Universe. Um, as someone who really gives zero shits about the Marvel Universe, I like Deadpool, I like Thor, I like Loki, and I give zero shits about anybody else. So, <laughs> like, I've only seen the Thor movies and Deadpool. And I've seen parts of Iron Man and I've seen, like, the first two Avengers, but I really don't care. I just don't care. Sorry, but I don't. So, anyways, <laughs> uh, I ended up giving this a four out of five. So, uh, the next book I read was "You Know Me Well" by Nina Lacour and David Levitt. And this was another audiobook that I listened to while I was at work, and it was so much fun, you guys. I just, oh, I had so many emotions while I was reading this because it's all about these two characters that are 
they're out at the bar for like pride week and stuff and there's just a lot going on in their personal lives and like i did a whole review for it on goodreads and on the book blog so i'll leave that link down below if you want to know like my in-depth thoughts but just know that i fucking loved it it really touched me in my heart and i gave it a five out of five stars it was just phenomenal i'm i'm obsessed uh and then the next book i read was all in by Jennifer Lynn Barnes, which this is the third book in the Natural series. This is the first time I've actually read this one. I never made it past book two. Uh, and I really enjoyed All In. It was, oh, it was just so good. And I just love the setting of like the casino. And I love Sloane in this. I love learning more about her because she's one of my favorite characters of the group. Uh, and I just love learning more about her and like the backstory of her and her family is just so sad and I literally want to go kick that guy's ass for like treating her like that because she deserves so so much better. Sloane is amazing and I love her so much so yeah <laughs> uh, but I gave it a 4 out of 5 stars uh, and then the next book I read fucking wrecked me you guys it's called lovely war by julie berry which if you guys haven't heard about it yet basically it's these two love stories set in world war one that end up intersecting and it's narrated by aphrodite and she's telling this love story to her husband and her lover and basically she's on trial for her infidelity does that not just sound like the greatest thing you've ever heard? Because it really is. Uh, I love this book. I listened to the audiobook when I was at work, of course, and I cried. I shit you not, I cried three separate times listening to this audiobook just over here, just like freaking out. So, and I gave it a five out of five stars. It was fantastic. Uh, and then the next book I read was another reread, and this was The Boxcar Children by uh, Jarut Chandler Warner, which I loved the Boxcar Children when I was in elementary school. I remember I read them and I loved them. And I was like, oh, this will be fun. The Jig Blast from the Past type thing. Like, I'm super excited. I'm gonna have so much fun. I hated every fucking minute of this, you guys. I hated every minute of it, except maybe for the Pink Cup. Which, if you've read it, you know what I'm talking about. For some reason, that was something I remembered very vividly from when I read it as a kid. And then when it showed up, I was like, ah! And I had a little squee moment. Other than that, I hated every moment of this thing. Because it was very much, it's just very much a list. It's like, and then, and then, and then, and then, and then. Oh my god, I got so bored. I was so annoyed. So I gave it a 2 out of 5 stars. I'm upset. Basically, moral of the story, don't read your child. Don't reread your childhood favorites. Unless it's like Harry Potter. Because, like, it's just not going to stand up. It's just not. I'm sorry. Uh, and the next book I read was another buddy read. I did this one with my friend Kristen. It was by Melinda Lowe. And this book was a fucking trip. It's basically like this sci-fi and like there's all this weird shit going on. And basically all these planes are crashing because these birds keep like flying at the planes. And the pilots can't see and then they crash and everybody dies. And our main character is, like, in an airport trying to get home from a debate, a national debate contest. Anyway, so she's with, like, her debate partner and her teacher. And so they end up renting a car to drive back home. And, like, just shit happens. Like, every single chapter leaves off on a cliffhanger. So you're never not, like, in suspense. Which in some ways works because it keeps you reading the book like I couldn't put the book down because I was just like I what the fuck is happening right now but at the same time like it kind of really fucks up the pacing I think because you're never you're never given enough time to really like let stuff sink in and understand it so anyway um I gave it a three out of five like I said I did keep reading it I was interested enough that we are buddy reading the sequel right now so like so it's not at all a bad book, it's just weirdly paced and a little weirdly written. But The Midnight Queen by Sylvia Izzo Hunter. This is basically a book all about this guy who ends up going to stay with like one of his teachers from his magical academy and shit's just really weird and fucked up at his house and this guy is 
crazy and I don't even know how to explain this book okay I just I don't know I thought it was gonna be so much better than it was and I'm actually kind of disappointed with how it was I give it a three out of five I think the sequel is gonna be better because they'll actually be at the magical academy so I'm gonna give that a shot but if I don't like it I might just unhaul these because I'm I was not impressed House of Salt and Sorrows by Aaron A. Craig and this a retelling of the 12 dancing princesses which the only other book I've read that was a retelling of that was Entwined by Heather Dixon and I would say that I actually like this one more this one has a much more darker tone to it atmospheric I feel like you f can like breathe you I feel like you could smell the ocean water and you could like breathe it in and it like really truly felt like you were there and seeing everything that was happening so i think that was really well done like all the sisters and their relationships i thought that was super interesting and i'm glad we got to to see those uh the only thing is that i don't like the ending the ending kind of killed it for me a little bit because i think it was it was going really really well and i was like wow this is gonna be an amazing book like wow i can't believe this is happening and like i don't know i think the ending was kind of a cop out i'm kind of sad about it so i ended up giving it a four out of five stars but for the most part i still really did enjoy this book and i do recommend it because like the atmosphere alone is worth it i read was solitaire by alice oseman and i know a lot of people have like you either love or hate this book kind of thing and a lot of people have mixed opinions on it and it's definitely like i think it's basically everybody's like least favorite of her novels but honestly you guys i loved it i loved it it very much spoke to me it was almost like alice oseman like spied on me and then like wrote about my experiences in in school because i was like wow like I really was this depressed kid and I really didn't care about what was going on with other people around me. I was very much internalized and very much inside of myself and I didn't really care about anything else going on. So I really related to our main character and I just really fucking loved this book. It was so good. I gave it a 5 out of 5 stars. It kind of put me in a depression for the rest of the day, not gonna lie, so that wasn't fun and I do wish that I had known about certain trigger things uh, ahead of time. But otherwise, I love this book. Fantastic, five out of five, highly recommend, but just be careful because there is very much a lot of depression, there's self-harm mentioned, uh, disordered eating mentioned, like stuff like that, so just be careful and you can probably find the actual like full list of all the trigger warnings somewhere um read it before you read that before you read the book is what i'm saying <laughs> dark shores by daniel l jensen <sighs> okay so anytime pirates are involved i'm probably gonna fucking love it right but like i was obsessed with this it was so freaking good oh my god it just it just it had everything I wanted from from pirates and it just loved captain is like reluctant she's like having to be recruited and she has to like take these people she doesn't want to take somewhere that she doesn't want to take them that they shouldn't know about and there's just all this stuff going on I don't want to spoil it it's pretty easy to spoil it but like I did do a review of it on the book blog I'll leave links down below if you guys want to know my thoughts but I gave it five out of five stars just it's really fucking good you guys it's really fucking good and then the last book i read in april i know oh my god we're finally here was blameless by gail carriger which is the third book in the parasol protected series and this one kind of pissed me off because from okay in book two there's this plot point that happens that really ticked me off at the end of the book so basically we're exploring that throughout this entire book, which makes sense. But there's this one character and what he has done is be a total jackass. And then basically this book, him, he's real, he's drunk the entire, for a lot of the book, 
and then he realizes that he's been being a jackass and then he starts cleaning himself up and just i'm just like dude you just i fucking am not cool with you right now i just fucking you're you're annoying and i don't like you is how i feel about this one fucking character it gets on my fucking nerves uh so that kind of annoyed me but i did enjoy the adventures that our main character is going on throughout this book and i really love this one plot point that happens with um some side characters yeah with like the professor yeah that was great that was fun love that so i'm excited to read the next book just to see what's gonna happen with like that little plot point because i think it's gonna be super interesting yeah um and i gave that one a four out of five stars i think when i finish the series i want to go back and reread the um her young adult series because some of the characters from this series do make cameos in that series but i can't remember exactly which ones do i think i have an idea of who it is but like I just want to make sure I'm right, basically. So, but yeah, that's the 24 books I read in the month of April. Oh my fucking god, I can't believe. I mean, I can believe I read so much. I always do, but like, oh my god, you're good. That was a lot. Those are the books I read. Uh, let me know what you guys read last month. Let me know if you had a favorite book, if you found some new favorites like I did, and let me know how you're doing i know the world is crazy right now so i hope all of you guys are staying safe and that you are well and i will see you in my next video bye